Morning friends, my name is Justin, welcome to my YouTube channel. I play guitar on songs in Nashville and today I just wanted to give you a tour of my favorite guitar that I kind of got away from for a little while but I've been coming back around to it. I do that a lot. I have a ton of guitars and they're all keepers for the most part. And sometimes I just get away from a sound or away from a guitar for a while six months, a year, 18 months, whatever. And when I come back to it, it's like new and fresh and exciting. And I'm like, oh yeah, I remember why I love this guitar. Well, I recently did that with this. This is a 1969 Les Paul Custom. And um, it doesn't have all the excuses that a lot of the other old customs that I, that I used to buy. When I got this, I guess here's the story of how I got it. I, I used to buy like, early 70s customs, right? With a headstock repair. Maybe they had the wrong pickups or something, but I, but I thought, you know, it's old wood, and if I can find one that's under 10 and a half pounds, you know, it would be like my road beater guitar or, you know, just something I would use all the time. And and I did this after I got off the road as well. I would, I would take a, a 73. I had a 73 and a 71 that I thought were pretty good guitars. Anyway, Fast forward to when Tom had his shop, Second Gear Music, in Berry Hill. Uh, I walked in there one day. I used to go there between sessions and hang out. That was that was the thing, is it was a hang, and nobody would ever buy anything. <laughs> he said that he, he wildly overestimated, or no, he said he wildly underestimated just how broke musicians are in Nashville. Anyway, uh, I went in there one day, and he had a 68 gold top standard for sale in the shop with the original case and I picked it up and played it acoustically and I was like man this sounds really good um, it had a big neck on it which I always find to be very comfortable um, and he was like man take it check it out if you're if you're interested I was like I definitely am so I took it played it on some things I was like yeah I'll buy it and paid him and then I went back into the shop I don't know a few weeks later a month later and he had this guitar sitting out for about the same price. And I was like, oh, man. And I knew this guitar of his. He had used this guitar in a lot of his early YouTube videos, like the, the Son of Kong demo videos that he did for, uh, for that company. Um, I think they filmed that at Blackbird. He did the, uh, there's like a controlled hillbilly music or, or Controlled Honky Tonk. I, I can't remember what it is. It's a really early video of him playing a track at Jay DeMarcus's studio. I have a love-hate relationship with that studio. Um, when you're in there, like everything sounds great and all the people there are great, obviously. Uh, but when you're in there, like the clients are so close behind you. Like the control room's a little tight, right? The clients, like you can feel them breathing on the back of your neck while you're playing. <laughs> you know, and if there's like a producer and an artist and then two of the writers and, you know, the artist's manager or whatever, like it gets pretty crowded. Anyway, there's a video of him playing this guitar in that room. And I just remember thinking, man, that is a great sounding custom. I mean, anything Tom plays is going to sound really great. You know, that's how he sells so much stuff. He's like, check it out. It's really great. And then he plays it and you're like, wow. <laughs> um, but in that video, he's playing playing in open G tuning, but a half step down, so open F sharp, you know. Uh, so G G tuning is D G D G B D. It's a it's a G chord. We'll take that all down a half step. That's what that that video, the tuning that video's in. I learned a lot from that video, and when I saw this guitar from these YouTube videos and from seeing him use it on sessions and stuff like he's selling that one, that's a great one. Um, I was like, Oh man, I wish I would have known. And he goes, well, you know, I'm, I'm a little sentimental with that gold top that you've got. And I was like, what? Like, that's the most uncle un uncle Larry thing to say. Right. But I guess the guy that he got it from was a mentor um, of his, an older guy. And, and he, sort of wished he hadn't sold it. I'd be surprised if he still has it, but at the time he was a little little sentimental about the guitar. And so he had offered to trade, you know. This was a little bit more than the gold top, so 
I took this and checked it out and I was like, man, I, I had my 73 headstock repair Les Paul Custom that was nearly 11 pounds, pancake body, you know, wrong pickups. Um, I would just play them back to back in the room acoustically and they were very different. And this guitar just sounded so good. And I was like, okay, yep, I'll do it. So I paid him the difference, gave him the gold top back. Gold top back and now I have this guitar. And this came with this really crazy rectangle case. It looks like a, a Strat or Tele case, but it's bigger. And it's actually thicker, it's taller, um, top to bottom. Because when a Les Paul lays in a case, you know, I mean, you can see the angle on the strings. It's not, it's not just straight like a Fender is. So uh, the guitar is a lot thicker, it's got this angle to it. So that case is crazy. And the first thing I did was buy a new historic case and that was something that Tom told me you should do. You know, he said, he said, man, the the guitars from way back in the day were amazing, but the cases were total crap. He's like, it's the opposite now. <laughs> I don't think that's quite true anymore. Like some of the some of the custom classic stuff and the uh, Gibson Custom Shop, the Murphy Lab guitars, like they're really great, really great. Um, so anyway. I've got this, this now, and here's, here's what it sounds like. I'm gonna, this is just, just amp, just amp. I mean, it's got this great, like you can still hear, you can still hear the Les Paul crang to it. It's got a bit of that snarl. It's not super mid-rangey and, and angry. Um, and it's just really clear and sweet. It, it's, it's a fantastic guitar. So what's different about it from the early 70s customs is that this has a one-piece body. It's not the pancake body thing that they were going for in the 70s. It doesn't have a maple neck like they started doing in the, in the mid-70s, I think. Um, it doesn't have the volute on the back of the headstock, that little bump that's sort of supposed to strengthen the neck, neck angle, the neck joint there. Well, I guess it's not a joint. It's just the angle at the, at the nut, basically. And it doesn't have the dot over the eye. So that, that was something they started doing. Uh, the neck, like you can, you can see that the, barely, barely through the headstock, you can see that the neck is three piece, three piece construction. So um, there's, some, there's some 68 Les Paul Customs out there, like original 68s. Those are hard to find. I mean, a 69 is hard to find too. These are pretty rare guitars. This has a typical late 60s Gibson neck. It's not as, as big and clubby as I would like, but it sounds so good and plays great and I can get so many great sounds out of it that it's like, I don't care, you know? I'll play, I'll play a guitar with a neck that isn't my absolute favorite. You know, I have 20 some, 25 guitars or whatever. They've all got different necks, it's fine. This guitar also weighs like barely over nine pounds. I mean, it feels like a, it feels like a good weight burst, you know? I feel like the good bursts are right around the nine pound mark, maybe maybe a little less or whatever. All the, all the ones that I played and I'm like, yeah, this sounds great. Um, that's what I need. I need a burst. I don't have one right now, you know? And I don't mean a vintage one, you know? I don't want a, I don't want a mortgage payment for a guitar. <laughs> but uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll get a hold of Gibson and try to go play a bunch of, bunch of new, new guitars that they're making. Um, I've played some reissues that have completely blown me away. Anyway, this guitar. It sounds killer. It's lightweight. It feels great. Um, it's totally original, except one of the pots, I think, from what Tom was saying, one of the pots was replaced, like it died. And then it also has a bit of overspray on the back of the neck and on the lower, lower bout here. Um, the reason for that as you can see, the, the finish was just flaking away. That, that happens a lot, you know, with, with old, old guitars, old nitro guitars. Um, so basically you just shoot a little bit of clear coat to preserve it. And so that's what's happened. You can see it all the way down the neck here. 
Uh, you can see it on this side as well. And I guess if you put it under a black light, you can see exactly where they, they oversprayed the neck. Um, that doesn't mean that it was oversprayed like it was super thick. It just means they sprayed it, they sprayed over the original finish to preserve it, you know? That's my understanding anyhow. I'm going to play this song. I'm going to play a solo on it that I played on the Biscuit video. Um, or wait, no, it was on my Deluxe Reverb video. But I'm not going to tune down for it. Okay, so I'm, the song's in C sharp, and normally, like, immediately I just go, okay, I'm going to tune down a half step and play in D. Or I'm going to go to drop D a half step down and get the low one, you know. But I'm in standard. But it's going to be in C sharp. So, we'll see how it goes, you know. Um, it's just rock and roll. What, what could be so terrible? What could be so terrifying about rock and roll? Um, I've got the throwback overdrive boost on. I've also got the uh, boost side of the tilt on. And I've got my uh, security blanket, the old slap back. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. Leave me alone. All right, here we go. So, you know, strings are a little tighter than I'm used to feeling when I'm playing in C-sharp, but uh, I'm not bending past notes, so that's nice. Um, I'm going to do this again, and uh, I think I'll turn the guitar up a bit. I feel like the track is so loud. Where, where do I monitor more, more of me? More! All right, one more time, because it's fun. Good old major scale rock, right? Uh, I've got one more song that I want to that I want to play some stuff on this over, uh, some stuff on this guitar, and then I'll let y'all go. This is super cool. Um, I really like the way that that slide speaks on this on this guitar. So I just want to play over this other track that uh, that I've worked on a long time ago. So throwback, um, Maris Mercury 7. I'm going to turn the slap back off. That's weird. I don't think I've ever said that before. <laughs> Here we go. solo. You know, for slide, I've been getting back to the old Coruscant bottle. And uh, I still hate the way my finger sweats inside of it. But man, I just can't argue with the way it sounds, you know. So here's, uh, here's this track. 
Let me give myself a bar of pre-roll. And yeah, I'm just gonna play, play some slide. Here we go. Very cool. Yeah, the guitar just, you know, it, it's a it's a Les Paul that I feel works in some other ways, you know, like it's really It's really great for that kind of stuff. What a great sounding guitar. I'm a huge fan. Huge fan. So, um, you know, I'll be playing it a lot, a lot, a lot more. There's one thing that I, that I tried to mod. Uh, I put a Tone Pros bridge on it with nickel saddles. And it instantly got more aggressive, right? A um, little bit louder. Notes rang a little, little stronger, a little clearer but it got really metallic sounding and I took it off. I went back to the original. These are, these are the original nylon saddles and uh, original bridge, original tailpiece. Everything's original except that one pot. And I think the, I wanna say the plate might be an original as well. But anyway, what a fantastic guitar, you know? Um, I feel like this would be out of reach for me today, money-wise, you know? Um, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't begin to presume to know what it's worth, but it's a really great one. So anyway, I hope you guys have a really good day. I will talk to you later. See ya.